Hey, record loving friends, this is Brian again from Tokyo Record Style. I just wanted to kick off the week with a little message and say hello. Hope you guys had a nice weekend. Hope you went out and got some um, records over the weekend, enjoyed some nice music. Uh, hope it was sunny wherever you were. I wanted to take uh, this morning real quick to share about a really nice score I got this weekend um, because I think uh, it'll help you know a little bit more about me. And that record is by an artist named um, Leon Russell. Now this is not the record that I scored, but you might know this name, Leon Russell. Leon Russell is from my home, from my hometown. He's from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's actually was born in Lot, a place called Lot in Oklahoma, and. Um, I can't really go so deeply into his history, but he, he's definitely a hometown hero of Tulsa, and he's a hometown hero of mine. Um, Leon Russell has a long career in music. He started out playing in Oklahoma when it was actually a dry state, when, it, when, when alcohol was, uh, there was no alcohol in Oklahoma. And, uh, but because there was no alcohol, you could play in the nightclubs, um, and the cabarets or whatever with an underage being under 21 or whatever. So he got a very early start in music and he had a very good, uh, knack for writing and, uh, ear for composing. And, uh, he became like, a a well-established musician at a young age. And he quickly rose through the ranks of like studio session player. And I think there's a story of him, um, moving out to LA and uh, he didn't have the right credentials to get into the studios, but uh, he, you know, he, they made fake uh, guild cards or whatever they are that that, that he needed to work. And um, there's some great old killer photographs of him inside studios conducting musicians and orchestras. And he he's not this sort of crazy character that he became later in life. He's kind of a young, short-haired Leon Russell. But um, Leon is considered a, I think he's a, I mean, they say he's like a musician's musician. He, he had this, well, there's, there's something called the Tulsa sound. Now, every place has, has its sound. I'm sure Albuquerque has the Albuquerque sound and Minneapolis has the Minneapolis sound and Tokyo has the Tokyo sound. But, but Tulsa has this sound and it's sort of this um, laid back groove and it kind of is maybe a reflection of the attitudes that are there it's a little bit slower it's a little bit nobody's really in a rush to get anywhere and um it's just got this really great smooth almost like reggae groove to it and i he's credited with a couple other characters from the T old tulsa music scene jj kale being one of them as creating this um, this Tulsa sort of like cowboy groove <laughs> for a lack of better words. And, uh, it's just in my blood. It's in my bones. I don't know why, but it's, it's just in there. It's blues. It's, it's country, but not country. I mean, he, Leon Russell is really famous for his piano playing. I should, I should mention that he's a very, very accomplished piano player. I think he also played guitar and drums and everything, but but his main instrument was piano and he's got this voice that just transcends music. It's he's got this incredible, I, I, I want to say twangy, but it's not exactly twangy. He's just got this crazy voice that is very uh, iconic and, um, you know, easily recognizable, e easily distinguishable from anybody else on in the mix. And he was, he became sort of a character in the early 60s when he uh, was being managed by a guy named Denny something or other, and uh, who was also managing, I think, Joe Cocker, of all people. And uh, Joe Cocker, the famous British soul singer who, you know, made, you know, I get by with a little help from my friends, that iconic performance from Woodstock. And... Um, Joe Cocker was getting tossed around by labels and by managers and he had this tour booked and uh, he had no band for the tour and somehow the manager no man also managing Leon connected Joe Cocker and Leon and Leon and his put a band together and went to UK and did this tour there 
um, the Mad Dogs and Englishmen tour. So I assume that he's the Mad Dog of the Mad Dogs and Englishmen tour. And uh, it was a famous tour and uh, seen by probably Clapton and Hendrix and, uh, you know, all the, the Who and whoever else in you can swing in London or whatever. And, um, you know, he became pals with the Beatles, I think George Harrison in particular, and I think as well as like Dylan and he played famously on the, in the concert for Bangladesh. He was the Joe Cocker's backup band for a number of years. And he's just, he's played on everything. And he was also seen by a young Elton John in, in this tour by, and, he, and when Elton gives an account of meet, of seeing Leon for the first time, and he said that he was blown away and that he modeled his whole uh, piano playing technique and his singing technique and on, on based on inspiration that he got from seeing Leon on that Mad Dogs and Englishman tour. It's a really, really compelling story. And um, I'm going to get to it here in just a second. But I just wanted to go through my Leon Russell discs here. I turn. So this is, uh, I don't, I don't have a really super extensive, extensive collection, but this is shelter people. This, if you, if you don't have a Leon record, this one's a really great one. I don't actually have the, I don't think I have his first self-titled record, which is arguably his best. I, I, I'm sure I used to have it, but this one has stranger in a strange land on it. Hard rain going to fall. Um, home sweet Oklahoma on my mind, sweet Emily. And, um, Beware of Darkness, George Harrison. This is a killer, killer record. I actually have two copies. And someday I'm going to create a situation where I'm going to give one of the, one of them away. You can get this record kind of anywhere, but I'm going to have... I don't know. I think I bought it twice because maybe I, did, I thought I didn't own it. Um, these aren't particularly right homeable about, but there, there he is. There's the man with the hat, Leon Russell. He's kind of was a... Uh, Elton says when he saw him on stage, he was kind of a scary motherfucker, but he, but he claims how friendly he was and how nice he was. And I mean, this guy, I mean, the fact that he was from Oklahoma meant a lot to me. It was like, wow, this crazy character came from my dusty state where, you know, I'm not going to talk sh smack about Oklahoma, but you know, it was just when you were 18, like California and New York were infinitely cooler than Oklahoma. And it was I always wanted to, I was also always so proud that he represented Oklahoma. So this is a really cool triple live album. Um, it's got, it's kind of a cool packaging. I'm gonna, someday I'm going to feature it on a packaging issue. But um, very cool, lively on record. Um, I think I got the best of Leon at a, at a book off. One time I saw it, it was too cheap to, to pass up. Um, Carney's another famous one. Um, I think this one has like Masquerade on it. I forget what's on here. I actually have two, two of these copies. Maybe I'll do a double giveaway. Um, one of these days. Yeah. Great, great record Carney. And, uh, the blue one with his face on a black and white picture is really one of the best, um, one of the best ones. And one more I'll feature, um, is Mark Benno and the Asylum Choir. Leon Russell is a very weird, unlikely combo. Leon Russell and Mark Benno and the Asylum uh, Asylum Choir. Um, this has one of the these these two guys were they they were a duo for a bit. This one's kind of a cool one because it has one of these jackets that folds out this way. You know, I kind of the the the. The vertical gatefold is always kind of an interesting choice. And they're wearing these kind of crazy clothes. He's got this cool mod suit on and this crazy necklace and, you know. And this, oh, and then, you know, psychedelic 60s. This one has a song on it called Icicle Star Tree. Oh, my gosh. you got to listen to this song, Icicle Star Tree. This is a crazy, could have been on Sgt. Pepper's. Really crazy, crazy cool song. And I guess they had a falling out about who wrote what at some point, and um, I'm not really sure. But the reason I, I know that they had a little rift between them is because I visited the um, church museum when I was back home at uh, in Tulsa. Now, I said the church museum. It's not exactly a museum. It's this old actual church, like this old Lutheran church that was built in like the early 1900s, and it changed hands a number of times over its course of, you know, over its lifetime, of 100 some odd years. And it was, 
I think it was the first, it was the first import, it was some first important, important church in Tulsa. And then this beautiful stone, sort of like, like a brownstone, sort of like that kind of just stone building, stone church with these sort of stained glass on the top, sort of arc, sort of how to describe like brutal ish. Not exactly. That's not what I'm trying to say, but square and not really ornate kind of, kind of rather simple shape, but, uh, it changed hands a number of years. And I think in, in, in the seventies, it went into sort of disrepair and it was on the market. And Leon who had had some commercial success at that point, uh, decided that it would be a great place to set up shop. And he, and I think a couple of his pals bought it. They thought, Oh, it's going to have great acoustics. And, uh, they bought this church, they gutted it and they turned it into like basically Abbey road of the, <laughs> of the Southwest, Midwest, whatever, Oklahoma. And, uh, I think they recorded some great albums there, some great music there. I think their own music and other musicians. And I think they were, I think it's, it, it connected a lot of interesting, um, uh, mu musicians and Tulsa people and, and, and people from all around. And it, and it, and, and Leon, I think had some ups and downs along the road. And, uh, I think the studio went away and, uh, his empire sort of evaporated a little to a degree, not really, but, um, to a degree, I think he had a bunch of hanger honors and he had some relationships that went South and it's just like a little bit of bad luck. And, um, and anyway, the church went away, but, uh, it did get bought by, a like the, not the family of Leon, but somebody who's a champion of his music and a champion of his legacy. And they've redone it. And it's absolutely amazing. It's like the, it's world-class. They've made a world-class recording studio called the church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And not only is it a recording studio, that's got this incredible Neve board that they've redone, spent millions of dollars to redo this place. You got to put it on your on your map of places to know about, but they've, um, they're going to make it into an engineering school, a sound engineering school. So I, uh, maybe I'll link it in the comments, the church, uh, studio in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, um, but, but Leon came to Tulsa a few times and, or excuse me, came to Tokyo a few times and I got to meet him here. Uh, the story, as the story goes, as some of you have heard, I, I met Leon apparently when I was a little baby. My, I had said to my dad when I was a young man, like, Hey, who was that guy with the long beard and the hat who used to cut? Did, wasn't there a guy who lived near us who like, wasn't he, um, you know, on TV or something? And my dad said, Oh, you're talking about old crazy Leon. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that guy was he, well, who was he? And he's like, Oh, that's, well, that was Leon Russell. I was like, what? He said, yeah, yeah, Leon, yeah, his girlfriend lived next door to us. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, old crazy. Leon. I was like, are, I was like, are you kidding? He's like, yeah, he used to come around all the time. And I'm like, Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. And he, my dad told me this story and, and I shared this story with Leon. It's a funny I backstage at a show in Tokyo because my friends were in his band and it was a story that went a little sideways and it's a, it's a funny story. Ask me about it next time you see me. But, um, but it was a, an amazing opportunity to get to meet Leon. He, he lived to be, uh, he died a couple years ago. He lived to be quite old and, um, had a long life in music, but in the, in his last kind of end of day in the final days, or I should say in his final couple years, uh, there's a story that, uh, Elton was shaving one day and looking in the mirror and put on his iPod and just flipped to Leon Russell and he was blown away because he, this music that meant so much to him as a kid or so much to him as a young player um, just hit him, you know, like, a, you know, just he was hit with a wave of emotion and realized he hadn't talked to Leon in, in decades. And so he called Leon and found out that Leon was not in good shape and playing rough gigs and not really getting the accolades or acclaim that he deserved and that... Um, and so he invited him to make a, he invited him to get together and maybe to make a record. And, um, and he told this story in Cleveland at the rock and roll hall of fame when Leon was getting in, inducted a year after the Elton made this phone call, he famously helped Leon, um, get into the rock and roll hall of fame and get him the recognition that he deserved. It's the most heartwarming induction, rock and roll hall of fame induction you'll ever see. I promise you have to go watch this. I mean, there's, there's the Prince performance. 
Um, there's the Genesis is a really cool one. There's so many good ones. The, the, Be the, the Rolling Stones inducting the Beatles. But Leon Russell getting inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame tops them all. I really recommend you go check it out. There's an in incredible performance of him at the piano playing um, Song for You, which is his masterpiece. A, a timeless standard that he, one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written and he plays a duet with john mayer on guitar and it will blow you away it's so good but they reference this um album that they're going to make together and i never saw the album i never heard the album and this weekend i actually found the album and I, i'd never seen it it's called the union with elton and leon it's four sides and it's just, there he is. They look killer at the piano. And this is the record that they made together. And my God, thank God this got made because I didn't have super high expectations of it, to be honest, just because so much good music came before it. I just didn't think it would, you know, I wasn't sure if it would stack up, but it does. It is so good. And it's produced by the famous um, producer T-Bone Burnett who, you know, is just a legend in music pr production, and there he is. There's T-Bone and Elton and Leon with the guitar, as I mentioned. He's, he's, uh... But there's just... You know who else plays on this record? <laughs> Neil Young. I think there's a whole cast of characters who uh, make cameos on this record. There's, as Elton tells the story, so many people came while they were in the studio and paying tribute to Leon and to this record. But um, I was really excited when I found this record and I because I knew about it and um, I found it at Tent Records and Share Tent in Tokyo. Shout out to Share Tent. Thank you for um, Box 34, whoever runs that box. That, that, that Tent, Share Tent is a record store where all the little, they have all these little cubbies and each little cubby is a different record store. And it's actually the thing, it's the thing that I was so blown away with when I visited, I just stumbled upon it one day in Tokyo. I said, what's this? And I wrote about it knowing that uh, my friends would be really impressed with it and like everybody would be, thought it would think it would be really cool. And so I wrote about that and that post went off. And that, that post is what inspired me to think, well, hmm, maybe I should share more about Tokyo record loving culture. And, and that's so, so big shout out to Tent. I, I found this interestingly at Tent and God, it's great. There's so many amazing songs on it. I really like um, My Kind of Hell, When Love is Dying, Never Too Old to Hold Somebody. Never Too Old to Hold Somebody. This song just will bring a tear to your eye. It's so touching. This is a great, great record. Um, you know, I highly recommend you listen to it. If you do, I think you'll have a better understanding of Leon and maybe a little bit better understanding of me and Tulsa and where, you know, the kind of roots music or, you know, roots rock that I grew up with. And that's kind of, like I said, in my, in my bones and in my soul. So thanks for letting me share that. Leon Russell, hometown hero from Tulsa, Oklahoma. You guys have been a uh, good sports for listening to such a long video. I appreciate it. Um, have a great week ahead. I hope you guys uh, find a score or two out there. And until next time, bye.